Welcome to another Sunday School Short. Today we're in Isaiah 13 through 17, starting right out in 13. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. Hit that bell notification to get alerts for new videos. Uh, chapter 13. Here, Isaiah prophesies Babylon's fall before they even become world power. They're still under the umbrella of Assyria, which is to the north. They're the world power at the time, although Babylon... Uh, Babylon is strong. They're an ally of Assyria. They work together to defeat other nations and so on and so on. But it's, it's after them, after Assyria, then comes Babylon. Then the next world power is the Medio, Media Persians. And they become the world power after that. So uh, verse 2, the last part of that, call up an army against Babylon. Verse 5, they come from distant countries. They are the Lord's weapons to carry out his anger and the remaining chapter describes how the land will be desolate after god after god's wrath takes place here it'll never be inhabited again which today it's modern day or iraq it's it's a desolate place uh desert animals will live there owls will live among so many many centuries um that area has just been desert at one time it was one of the seven ancient wonders of the world with the hanging gardens of babylon um verse seven i will stir up the medes against babylon and that's cool that uh god's word mentions this by name many many years centuries before it actually takes place this was again uh isaiah's time as a prophet was between 740 and 681 bc and Babylon didn't even become a world power until around 600. So, really cool. Chapter 14, uh, Isaiah 14, verse 1. But the Lord will have mercy on the descendants of Jacob, that be in Israel and Judah. Uh, he will choose Israel as his special people once again. He will bring them back to the land they once settled. Or bring them back to settle once again on their land. Nations from around the world will help them, it says. The last part of 16, it says they will taunt after this the feet of babylon they will talk they will talk the king of babylon in his defeat can this be the one that shook the earth and made kingdoms of the world tremble verse 20 uh you will not be given a proper burial again talking about the king of babylon for you destroyed your nation and slaughtered your own people this is what the lord says verse 22 i myself have risen against babylon then it switches gears uh, to talk about assyria and then the people the philistines um about verse 26 i have a plan for the whole earth a hand of judgment upon all nations so he's going to destroy these people that have continually destroyed um israel and judah and then in uh, verse 30 talking about philistines i'll wipe you out with a famine a powerful army comes down like smoke from the north 15 and 16 isaiah 15 and 16 is a message about moab which was a neighboring nation they're also attacked by Assyria. It says different towns and places will be leveled, totally destroyed. Uh, the last part of four, the bravest warriors of Moab will cry out and utter terror. Verse eight, I, a cry of distress echoes through the land of Moab. And then uh, chapter 16, when oppression and destruction have ended and enemy raiders have disappeared, then God will establish one of David's descendants as king. Hmm, sound familiar? Uh, if we rule, he will rule with truth and mercy. He will always do what is just and be eager to do what is right. That is, again, a prophecy of, uh, an Old Testament prophecy of Jesus here. It continues to talk about Moab and their lack of resources in the remaining part of the chapter, verse 9 um, of chapter 16. There are no more shouts of joy. They will cry out for the gods in their temples, but no one will be able to save them, verse 12. Make sure you... Are crying out to the one the only one that can truly save you don't go in other outlets other directions cry out to the one that can save you from the little things here on earth and also from uh, eternity within three years the joy of Moab will be ended only a few of its people will remain alive uh, verse 13 and um, a guy called uh, Tiglath Pileser he was uh, king of Assyria, he was the one that wiped them out of Moab in 732. 
So the people then at that time saw prophecy fulfilled right before their eyes. Pretty cool. Chapter 17 today uh, is the message for Damascus, which is Aram, uh, Damascus being the capital, and also Israel. The city of Damascus will disappear, it says in verse 1. And then it goes straight into Israel. In that day, Israel's glory will grow dim. Verse 4, verse 6, only a few of its people will remain left. And we talked about that, the remnant. There'll be a time of exile where these people are hauled off by the Assyrians. Israel's hauled off by the Assyrians in 722 B.C. Uh, then at last, the people will look at their creator. Join me. Let's don't wait, America, on discipline. Let's get after it. Let's run to Jesus. Cling to him. Um, don't wait on discipline to take place in your own personal life or us as a nation. Um, and then the people were saying, why did this happen? Why did this destruction take place? Verse 10, why? Because you turned from God. Who can save you? How appropriate is that? Today, yesterday, today, and forever. And it ends talking about the armies of other nations uh, coming to defeat Israel and that God will ultimately defeat them. God wins. God ultimately wins all this. So why not? Let's get on the winning team already. Let's get after God. Be in God's Word. Know more about Him. Be a daily Bible reader. Join me in these devos. Like, subscribe, and share if this is a blessing to you. God bless you. Have a great day.